speaking to everyone is speaking to no one. So um, having a specific niche or niche will help you to kind of separate yourself from the, uh, the competition. What would be the framework that a graphic designer should follow to get themselves to the six figure mark? So I put together like this framework. OK, so there are seven specific steps um, and they seem simple, but a lot of designers, we kind of all over the place. You know, we doing a little bit of design. We doing videography, photography, mm. and it just looks from the, from the outside looking in. It looks like we just trying to make ends meet. And that may be the case, but you never want to come across like you're just trying to make ends meet because that scares away high paying clients. There's clients out here that got money to spend. You guys know it, right? There's not enough high value designers, not enough designers that show up at a high level consistently to answer that call. So I put together this framework. So step one is to clarify your, your, your mission and your goals, right? And really your vision. So where are you trying to go? Why are you even in this space? And with that comes self-assessment, right? You have to be honest and assess your skills, assess your interests and assess what your clients need and how your interests and skills line up with that. Because a lot of designers, you know, will do things we don't necessarily like, or our clients will request things that we're not great at. So you have to figure out, okay, for example, if it's logo design or branding, am I good at it? Do I suck at it? If I suck at it, then am I going to get better at it? And if so, how am I going to delegate it or am I going to get rid of it? Right. So we have to really dive down deep into into the self-assessment piece. Um, Because a lot of times we don't want to we don't want to be honest when we get stuck doing things we don't necessarily like, like m myself, particularly. I don't really like flyers. I don't like doing slide decks, stuff like that. So with that, if when I get requested, I delegate it, you know, I delegate those types of things. Um, but a lot of designers, we don't, you know, we just don't do that and then we get stuck. Um, so you really have to take a personal inventory and then set some aggressive goals. It's okay to set goals as a designer. So if you want to make six figures, what does that look like? Break it down, you know, by month and then by week. And let's say, you know, it's like, let's say $2,000 a week or something like that. So what does that mean in terms of your services and your pricing and then your capacity? Do you have a capacity to even reach that based on your current prices? A hundred dollar flyer, that's not going to do it. You see what I'm saying? So um, when you have those those goals, you can set specific steps. You can break them down into specific steps to achieve those goals. Right. So that's step one is clarifying your vision and goals. And step two is setting up your business and your systems. A lot of designers, we just accepting stuff, you know, um, invoicing out of PayPal, Cash App, all of that. Don't set up an LLC, like little things like that. You know, setting up your business, making sure your business is legally registered. It, actually having a portfolio, actually having a professional email address rather than a Gmail, you know, things like that. Setting up a business bank account, using the CRM, you know, um, and that's a client relationship manager. I recommend Dubzato, but there are other ones out there like 17 Hats, HoneyBook. So you can have one specific space or place for your, your clients. So everything like your questionnaires, your contracts, your invoicing, your scheduler, you know, um, a client portal. I like Dezato because it has a client portal. Um, and that's impressive to clients. They may, they, they're used to working with designers. They don't have any of that. So my perceived mm -hmm. value is a lot higher in my positioning and posturing. I just, I separate myself just by having a client portal, you know, little things like that, that designers aren't doing. Um, so that's step two. And step three is clarify your market and your messaging. So a lot of designers, we just work with everybody, any and everybody, doesn't matter who they are. You know, like Larry said, sometimes you have to do that, but you want to get to a point and I, I recommend having between 50 to 100 clients so you can get a larger, a large enough data, data sample to figure out who it is that you enjoy working with the most, who truly values what you do. Like they let you do your job and who has the means to pay you what you're worth. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot, you know, let's say you work with real estate agents. They may have, um, they may value what you do. You may like working with them, but maybe they don't have the means to pay you what you want to get paid. That's not gonna. That's not gonna be a long-term sustainable business for you. So you kind of have to have that trifecta, but you have to have a large enough data sample to figure out who that is. So you can say, okay, I work with a few real estate agents, a few lawyers, a few beauty brands, and things like that, to to, to figure out who that is. Um, so once you know who that is, you can speak to them. You can speak to them because you know who they are. You know their language. You know what to say. That's like early on. I think a lot of my success, quote unquote successes has been due to the fact that I say I serve speakers. At least I did, you know, early on. I served speakers. So you, you guys have seen the Facebook posts like, hey, hey, who does logos? Who does websites? And like 40 designers that get tagged, right? 
they will all respond like, yeah, I, I sent you a DM. I never would have to respond, but I would get tagged by a couple people. And if, if that person is a speaker, they went to my site and it said, hey, I serve speakers. I would get a long, hard look just because I said I serve them. You know, and my messaging is tailored to them. Whether they could afford my services or not is a different story. But the fact that I, I penetrated through the noise, I cut through the noise and said, hey, I serve you. I got a long, hard look. So that really helped out early on. And it still helps to this day by saying I serve speakers. And now I say, you know, I serve seven, eight figure speakers now. Um, but that helps as well. Because speaking to everyone is speaking to no one. So um, having a specific niche or niche will help you to kind of separate yourself from the uh, the competition. So step four is presenting yourself as a premium service provider. So that goes along from not only social media, like how you show up on social media and your website, but also all your touch points, your email, your, your uh, whatever marketing that you do. Uh, if you're out in public, let's say you have a, a, a trade show booth, a vendor, retractable banner, and also on consultations and Zoom calls. Are you intentional about how you show up? You know, a lot of a lot of designs, we just look like we in our grandma's basement on a Zoom call and we just plop down mm -hmm. on our lunch break. We about to go back to our full time job at Starbucks. But even if that's the case, you never want to show up like that. You never want to come across like that. You want to show up like I do this full time. I take this serious because it shows that you're going to take the client's project serious as well. And it gives them a bit more confidence. And it's an icebreaker, too. You know, I'm not saying you have to have a elaborate dope setup looking like a YouTuber and all of that, but at least upgrade your lighting. Make sure that your, your camera the quality is, you don't have to get an expensive camera, get a webcam. Don't use the, the, the camera that's on your, your laptop. Even if you use your phone, you can, you, if you're on iPhone, you can use your phone as a webcam now, continuity camera, I believe. Um, just be a bit more intentional about how you're showing up on these consultations and Zoom calls because it'll take you a long way. Even doing something like using Loom, um, to, to send back a quick video to a client if that reaches out to you. Say, hey, it's, it's good to meet you. I just wanted you to see my face. This is a little bit about what we what we do, what we offer. Little things like that will go a long way. Just being intentional about how you show up. So number five is creating your high value packages and pricing them accordingly. So something that I work with designers on is going from a la carte services, like $100 flyers, to creating packages. So a lot of designers, they'll charge like $100 a flyer. I'll say, look, going forward, you're not charging $100, you're charging $500 plus. And just create a package. Say, hey, instead of five flyers for $500, say, I'll get, give you six flyers for $500. So it's like they get an extra flyer, but now you have a package just like that. You're not really doing that much more work. And you're getting paid $500 a pop as opposed to $100 here and there. Because there's a switching cost when it comes to jumping from project to project to project. What we already do as designers, it can get dark and lonely because... You know, we're just sitting at our computer and we're coming up with designs over and over and over. It's mentally exhausting, right? Now, you know, we have AI to help us out with that. <laughs> but, but it can be mentally exhausting. Yes, yes. Shout out to AI. It's, it's, it's an interesting time, but it's exciting. Um, so, and then pricing those packages accordingly. And as you start to elevate your, your positioning and you speak to a specific type of client, you're able to kind of set your rate. You're able to kind of be a little higher than the next guy because there is no next guy. Like when you kind of create your own market and there are no, no, there's no competition, right? And number six is develop your six figure process. So all the way from beginning to end. So from discovery, when they first re first reach out to you through to the, the consultation, through to setting up their client portal, giving them their contract, making sure you clearly set the expectations that are expected of them and what they should expect of you, how long it should take, then the design process, revisions, et cetera, how many, how many revisions do they get? All of that should be clearly defined up front. Um, so there's no guessing game. But then, you know, once you perfect whatever the design is, the website or whatever, launch it, post launch, what does that look like? Do they get a tutorial? Do you maintain the site? You know, all of that stuff should be clearly defined. It shouldn't just be up in the air. And, and you don't ever want them to have to ask you what that is. You should tell them up front. Um, and then step seven is just relaunching. So all that we just talked about, putting all that to work and then relaunching as a premium service provider, as as more of a high end, high touch service provider, as opposed to like an order taking grunt worker, which is a lot of designers mm -hmm. we end up being. So um, I know that was a lot, but <laughs> that's a peek behind the curtain that, at the process, at the um, the step by step yeah. system, that yeah, if you get it right, you pretty much guarantee 
to at least do this full time. I can't guarantee six figures, but I know designers that are doing it once they implement it. All right, we just gave you the whole <laughs> blueprint. Good night, people. No, I'm saying. <laughs>